So what does cutting the cord mean? So the goal of getting rid of cable is to eliminate cable costs. They're typically a lot higher than streaming uh, services, even when you're doing multiple streaming. So when you're using multiple streaming sites, um, it does involve using the internet, internet data to stream TV and movies um, and other things over the internet. So what we're gonna cover today is um, what is streaming? First of all, and how does that work? What devices you can use to stream content? And then what services provide the content that you're gonna stream on these devices? So whether that's uh, live TV, which we'll talk about, um, or videos on demand, um, TV on demand, things like that. So first of all, what exactly is streaming? So streaming is media, so whether that's um, movies or music, something like that being sent over the internet and it's playing in real time. So you can play it instantly as it arrives in real time. You're not downloading the content, so it's not something you're keeping, but you can play it right away. Um, so because of this, it's pretty much something that you can play in an unlimited amount of times if you want, as long as that streaming service has that content, you can repeat it over and over. You can watch it a week later, um, just depending on how much you want to watch it. So it's it's kind of always there um, to watch. So basically the content is sent from the streaming service. So you're using something like Netflix or Hulu uh, or Amazon Prime, and then you're streaming it to that player. So Roku, Smart TV, which we'll talk about, and then it converts it into that data that you're seeing in video and sound form on your TV. So what do you need to stream? Um, this is where it gets a little challenging for some to switch over to streaming um, because there are certain things like how much data you can use and how much speed you can use in order to stream. Um, so first of all, you do need an internet connection in order to stream. And then of course, again, you need that streaming device. Um, but also if you ditch cable, typically cable or internet companies will bundle that cable, the internet, a phone service, and they'll put it all in one bundle price, which is not necessarily cheap, but it's all together. And typically, because they're bundling it, you're getting unlimited data. Um, not everyone even knows. It's kind of sometimes automatic. Um, so it's, it's nice because you don't have to worry about data. Well, when you're taking that apart and you're just getting that internet, um, so you're going to need, un you're not going to have unlimited data. So you're going to need to make sure you have the right amount of data. Um, and it, it sounds kind of complicated, but actually once you figure out how much you need, it's not that hard. Um, and a lot of the internet companies start pretty high. There are plans that you can get unlimited data. They're a little more costly for internet, but you don't even usually need that much because something like Xfinity, a, a company like Xfinity, they, cap, they have an automatic amount. So it's measured in gigabytes and terabytes, and their amount is at one terabyte. A lot of people don't even use that, even if you have a lot of people in your household. Um, AT&T is another one, and their start's pretty high. So data is actually, even though you're not getting unlimited necessarily, it's, it's pretty high for what you're going to need it for. So you typically don't have to worry as much about that one. Um, what people do have to worry more about is the data speed they're using. So typically data speeds are, they have a huge range. Um, it usually is typically 20 to 100 what people are using. Some of the lower data plans uh, that you'll see with internet companies start at 24. Um, they go upwards of 200. A lot of the times though, again, a lot of people don't need 200 for speed uh, unless you're doing a lot of watching in 4K, which is super high resolution, or you're doing a lot of gaming at the same time. Usually you don't even need that high. Um, the typical amount is around 50 to 100 for a lot of people. I have 24 and I found that for a while it was good, but now it's not. And the reason for that is there's different factors that will impact your speed. So one of those is how many people you have in your household. So the more people that are using your internet, the more speed you're gonna need. So if you have a lot of people in your home, you may need a, a higher amount of speed. Um, again, that resolution is going to make a difference. If you're watching standard definition, you're going to use a lot less versus high definition, or if you're going all the way up to 4K streaming, which is the highest resolution. Um, another thing that impacts it is your quality of your device. If it's an older device, you may be having a little bit of a slowdown with speed. 
because um, it's working harder. And then another thing is user traffic. So if you have a lot of people in your area that are also using something like AT&T, there's only so much speed that they have for everyone in the area. So the more people who come, the more it slows down. That's one of the things that I found out. I used to have okay speed and now 24 is not enough because of that. I also typically use the internet um, on my computer while I'm watching TV or even using my phone Wi-Fi. So if you're using multiple devices at a time, it also will impact your speed. So why this sounds a little complicated, it's actually, once you kind of get an idea, it's not too hard. You kind of set it at an amount and it, it kind of keeps. They also, the internet companies will notify you if you're getting too close to your data. Um, you can track it yourself and they'll email you if you're going to go over. So it's actually not too hard once you get that set. But those are the two things that are important with streaming. So some of the terms to know, I just wanted to go over a few of these as I'll be talking about them off and on throughout the presentation, um, just so you have a little bit of a base idea before we go on. Um, so, so two similar terms are mirroring and casting, um, but they're, they're different. So mirroring is something where you're using one device. So if you're using your laptop computer or a tablet or a phone and you're mirroring those movements as well as the screen onto your, say, your TV. So you're projecting what you're doing and what you're seeing on your screen onto your TV. Um, so if you're doing a slideshow of pictures or something like that, you can put that on your TV, but it will take up both devices. So you're going to see it on that laptop and you're going to see it on your TV at the same time. Whereas casting, so we'll talk about casting a little bit more with Google Chromecast because that's where it uses it the most. You see that little symbol in the uh, bottom corner there, that's the casting symbol. And typically it's used with an internet uh, over the streaming service. So you're using Netflix or Hulu and you're setting it up on one device like your phone and then you're casting it using that casting symbol to another device, specifically your TV, in order for it to play that um, content onto your TV. So with casting, you can cast it, you can set it up for different rooms and cast it from different rooms. You also don't have to worry about it showing on both screens. So both devices aren't taken up. You can cast it from your phone onto your TV, and then you can do other things on your phone. So you don't have two um, devices at the same time that are using that streaming service. So that makes it very convenient. But those are the two different terms. Um, again, we'll go over more of that with different things as we go over some of the streaming stuff. Um, and then the other one is free trial. I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with using free trials, but a lot of these streaming services will allow you to do a trial run, whether it's a week or a month. Um, and you will have to put in your credit card information, but it won't charge you. It will um, require you usually to cancel that service after the trial period, or you do get charged um, for that next month when you officially start your streaming. So with streaming services, it's typically you're doing monthly um, paying. So you're not, you're, you're not really locked into a contract, which is great. So you don't have to worry about canceling at any time. Uh, those are usually something you're just paying for that month. Um, but that's what free trial is. And again, we'll go into more of that. So all of these um, services, streaming services, they're gonna have an app that you can download. So you can put it on your phone or on your laptop and you can watch it that way. Um, we'll talk about that with some of the pros of streaming. But what we're gonna be talking a lot about in this next section is these streaming um, things that you can use to stream on your TV, basically to show it on your TV. But just so you know, you can use it in your internet browser on an app um, to use these streaming services as well. So what devices can you use? We're going to go over some of the more popular ones such as the Roku, the Apple TV, Chromecast, um, Kindle Fires versions, and uh, video game consoles. So the Roku is the most popular right now of all the different streaming devices. They also have a lot of different options for what you can buy. It all depends on what you're looking for, uh, how much you wanna pay, um, so it just depends on what kind of features you want. So for instance, the Roku Ultra, which is the more expensive, one of the more expensive ones, comes with Bluetooth that you can stream um, and a headphone jack. It comes with 
the HDMI cable. Uh, it has the voice remote. So some of the remotes um, are just ones that you can control your streaming device, and then some you can connect it to your uh, to make sure it works with your TV. So you can control volume and power on and off and things like that. So it has the fancier remote. Um, and then all of pretty much all of these de uh, devices, minus maybe the Google Chromecast, do require that you have an HDMI cable or plug into an HDMI port. Um, so like the streaming sticks, they will plug into your, directly into your HDMI port. They also require you either use a wall adapter that it usually comes with or a USB port as well to power the device. Um, the box top things like the uh, Roku Ultra, Premiere, the Stream Bar, those are gonna give you basically the option to use a HDMI cable. Some of them come with the HDMI cable, sometimes they don't and you have to buy that separately. Again, that's what the price points are for. Um, so you can buy converters. So if you just have an, um, a component version for your TV, so you have an older TV, you can buy some converters for that um, to plug that in as well. So it just depends on what you want to get. They're all pretty much compatible with all the streaming services. You're going to be able to get your Netflix, your Hulu, your Amazon Prime, Apple, everything with the Roku. So that's kind of what the Roku screen looks like. One of the biggest deals about the Roku is that it's really simple to use. You have this um, screen where all your apps are in one place. You can sort those around to what you use the most. You can scroll down, but they're all going to be on that home screen for you. So it's a really simple interface. Um, it doesn't promote a lot. Some of the things that people talk about with the Amazon one are that it promotes its Amazon service a lot with some of the home screen stuff. Um, so Roku is not very pushy with that. It does have its own Roku channel. So you can get some free TV, some free movies through the Roku channel, but it doesn't push the service at you. Uh, it also has a nice feed where you, a lot of the streaming services will allow you to save like watch lists and um, keep track of the shows you're watching. But the Roku feed is nice as well because when something is added to a streaming service, like something is added to Amazon or Hulu, you'll be notified that there are new episodes available. So you can see where that's found. Or if you want something, I don't know, if you want to watch stuff with Scarlett Johansson in it, you can save her as Part of your feed and if she shows up in a, a movie that's on Hulu then you'll be able to go and watch that. So it has a nice feed option and then again it has the nice remote that you can use for your Roku. Um, some buttons on the bottom depending on which one you buy they will have different um, little buttons that will go directly to those streaming services. So for instance Hulu it will take you right there, Netflix, um, Disney is one of the newer ones so it will go directly to there you don't even have to click on the apps on your Roku um, screen. And the apps are really easy to add as well. So adding those um, different streaming services is very simple. So Amazon is the other one. It's kind of, they're kind of neck and neck all the time with popularity. Um, they have a little bit less options, which can be nice. So you're not having to choose between so many. A lot of the great things about the Amazon products is that they do have the um, voice remote minus the Fire TV stick, which doesn't have the voice remote. You can't control your volume and things like that. Um, but it allows you to integrate it with your Alexa devices. So if you have an Echo um, device at home, you can use that as well. You don't have to have one of those. You can still use the um, voice control and search for things with the uh, device uh, remote, but you can have those, you can integrate those. So again, the costs are based on what you get. The Fire Cube includes, you know, you have your 4K, so you can get the top level of streaming resolution. It has those volume controls. Um, it also has an Ethernet port built into it. So not all of these devices allow you to connect to an Ethernet cord. Again, you can get adapters and things, um, but it does a direct connection. So you can have your Wi-Fi if you want to use Wi-Fi to stream on multiple devices. You can use that Ethernet cord, that uh, wired connection, in order to plug it into your TV. Some people prefer that specifically for their TV because it can be faster and you have less issues with speed. 
Um, so it of course ties into your Amazon account so you can watch your purchase content as well on the Fire devices. Um, you actually can do that through Amazon Prime as well. So it's not something that you can't do on other devices, but it's integrated nicely. It's compatible with all the different streaming services. Um, and again, has that nice uh, remote. So it's kind of what the Fire screen looks like. The top one is actually Fire TV. Um, so it kind of has all the apps in one spot as Roku does. Um, it promotes a little bit more on the top and on the bottom, but it's very similar. The Apple TV, um, it's not as popular as the others, mostly because of the price point. They tend to be, Apple is always tended to be a little bit more expensive. Um, it does have a product that has your 4K, so that's why that um, costs a little bit more, but it will give you the Apple TV service. So we'll go over that streaming service for three months. So you have that extra feature that they're promoting right now. And you have the nice fancy stereo remote, um, which I'll show you on that. So that's the nice theory remote. It has a trackpad, it has the voice controls. Um, and then you have the Apple TV that the streams in HD. So again, based on streaming quality is what you're paying for for these. So those are the ones for Apple. Um, again, it uses the HDMI port. The Apple TV um, 4K actually does have the ethernet port as well. They both come with the HDMI cable um, and then the Apple is great for integrating with your other Apple products. So you can do things like um, searching the internet or playing your music and things like that, like your iTunes movies and music, you can play your content, your purchased content as well on these devices. So they're really good with integrating their own products as well. Um, that's kind of, again, what the screens look like for that. So these are all very similar, um, just the, Interface is a little bit different on each of these. So Google Chromecast is kind of the more different uh, streaming product that you can get. And that is because the Google Chromecast and the Google Chromecast Ultra, they do not have remotes. So you may have to be a little more tech savvy because you're gonna be using a phone or a tablet to control these. So it allows you to use that, again, that casting symbol that I talked about and put that onto your TV from the streaming service. So you're using what's called their Google Home app and you're controlling your different um, services through there and your volume and things like that, but it is using your phone. Um, the ultra, the bigger thing about that is the 4K. You can play 4K, it has the ethernet port, um, and then it, of course you can use Google Home. So if you have the Nest and things like that, which is basically Google Home products that can control your thermostat, your lights, things like that, you can integrate those. You don't have to have those again to have a Google Chromecast. Um, and then the newer thing, a little bit newer thing is Google Chromecast with Google TV. So you don't have to have an actual TV for this. It's another one of their kind of products. It's kind of like Roku and their Roku channel is Google TV. And the great thing about that is this now comes with a remote. So it's a little more similar to the Roku and the Fire um, so you can actually use a remote to control. It has that voice um, assistance, the Google Assistant, so you can tell it what you want it to search. You can search pizza places in your area, so you can do different things than just control your TV streaming or your movie streaming. Um, it also connects to an HDMI port on your TV, so these use, um, they're like the sticks. They use HDMI and then they use the uh, USB as well to power it if you're not using the wall adapter. Um, so the Google Chromecast, um, the Chromecast with Google TV has the ethernet port as well as does the 4K one. Um, the great thing about the Google Chromecast with TV is besides it having that remote, you're able to, it, it kind of suggests things for you. So it will show up on your screen um, with the different TV suggestions or movie suggestions. It's not based on the apps as much as it is on what you're watching. You can create different, um, basically different users. So if you're watching something like Grey's Anatomy and you your husband doesn't want you to, or doesn't want to see the same thing on his screen, then he can create a different user for the um, Google TV. So you have different users you can have and you have different suggestions and different recently played things. So it's more based on your preferences than those apps. You can still go to those apps, but it allows that extra feature. 
Um, and it also still will cast. You don't have to use the remote, you can still cast it. Um, another great thing with casting is if you're in a different room and your Google Chromecast is set up for one TV, you can set it up on your phone in another room and cast it onto that TV. Uh, so it allows a lot of flexibility. Um, but again, the Google Chromecast without the TV portion, you do have to use your phone. It's compatible with all the streaming services as well. So that's kind of what it looks like. Um, they come in different colors. And then that one in the bottom corner there, the big, big screen TV, that's kind of what it looks like with your suggestions more than your apps. So the apps are a little bit smaller. Um, so again, you'll see that the casting symbol when you're using that. And then of course you can use video game consoles as well to stream content. So if you already are a big gamer and you own one of these, you should be able to stream. Uh, you can uh, download the apps and stream these different services. So you don't have to buy another uh, device. You can also cast like the Google Chrome, Chromecast with a lot of these as well. So these are just another option. And then smart TVs. So they're getting a little bit less pricey, so more people are buying them. Um, the good thing about smart TVs is you it's kind of like the Google TV um, service where you are having all the different apps on one screen. It's directly on your TV. Of course, the smart TVs have the 4K, so you're getting that sharper picture and better colors. Um, you can connect straight to your Wi-Fi and you can browse the internet, you can access your music, you can shop online. So it allows you to do it all through your TV. Um, of course, when you do have a 4K TV, you have to worry about those higher costs of internet because you're gonna need more speed. Um, you do have to have the devices that play those um, 4K as well. So you have to have the TV as well as the internet speed, as well as the devices. So you have to have the 4K devices. So again, that cost is gonna go up, but if you're interested in a higher resolution um, picture, then that is an option for you. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this, you can download apps onto your devices. So if you wanna download it onto your Kindle or your laptop, your tablet, your phones, um, you can download the Apple stuff through the IO, um, Apple Store, the iOS stuff, and then the Android through the Google Play Store. You can stream it through your internet browser. So it's very um, travelable, so you can take it to different places with you. Um, and then some of the streaming services also allow uh, downloading of offline content. So you download the content when you're connected to the internet, and then it will be saved onto your device for a certain amount of time. And you can take it with you when you travel. Like if you're taking a train travel and you have no internet, then you can play a movie or a TV show that you've downloaded previously on your device. Before I go into the different streaming service options, I do wanna mention that we have devices you can check out at our library. We have the Kindle Fires as well as Roku Expresses that you can check out. And they are loaded with some of the different streaming services. Uh, so Netflix, Hulu Plus, Disney Plus, ESPN, HBO Max, Amazon Prime, and Hoopla are all included on both of these uh, devices. So we'll go into the streaming services, um, but you can check those out at either library location. So the streaming services we're gonna go over are some of the most popular ones. There are quite a number of them, um, but these are some of the main ones that you're going to see. So first of all, there is Netflix. Netflix is the most popular streaming service out there right now. Um, they probably are one of the most popular because they don't have ads at all. So you don't even have to worry about picking the plan with or without ads. Um, they do have plans based on your streaming quality though. So it's one of the few that does. Um, so you can get the basic plan, which is actually the standard definition, standard, which is actually high definition, it's kind of confusing, and premium, which is ultra HD, um, which is just a little bit under 4K, but it's, it's basically the same. So those are the different prices for those different uh, streaming options. And again, there's no commercials. Most of Netflix content is actually released all at once. So something like Bridgerton, you'll be able to see the whole season, that season that's released at one time. So that's why uh, Netflix is most associated with binge watching. Um, there are a few of them that will release 
uh, one episode or a few episodes at a time, but for the most part, it's all at once. Um, so Netflix is great because it has a lot of original content. So they have created lots of TV shows and lots of movies that is exclusive to Netflix. So as I mentioned, Bridgerton, you have Stranger Things, The Crown, Dead to Me, um, some of these you may have heard of because they're super popular shows on Netflix. Um, but Netflix also offers some other TV options, some past TV that's been um, out before. So you get stuff like Breaking Bad that you can watch, um, How to Get Away with Murder, stuff like that that you can see on Netflix. And then of course they have, besides their original movies, they have other movies that come through the streaming service as well. Um, one of the things about some of the streaming services, they do have content that will come and it will go not with their original content, and it's not as typical with TV, uh, for at least for Netflix, but sometimes you'll see a movie and then a month later it will go away from the streaming service. Sometimes you'll see it on another streaming service. So that is one of the downsides of having um, streaming is sometimes things will go away, but then they're also constantly getting new content as well. Um, so these are just, again, some of the different things that are offered. Uh, so that is the look of Netflix. That's another reason why it's uh, super popular is because it has a very simple interface and a lot of great features to it. So we will give you suggestions based on what's streaming in the area, what's streaming uh, nationwide. Uh, it will give you subjects so you can watch you know, romance movies or you can watch reality TV or whatever subject you're looking for. It will give you different categories. You also have different profiles profiles that you can create. So if you want to watch it and your child wants to watch another um, uh, different things, you can create your own profiles. And within that profile, you can create a watch list. So you can add, they'll separate out the TV and the movies um, sections, and then you can add different TV and movies to your watch list. Uh, so that's great for being able to see different things at once. You also are able to stream multiple um, on multiple devices. As you can see um, on this screen here, depending on which plan you get, you can watch it on a certain amount of screens. So the basic plan you can watch on say one TV. On the standard plan, you can watch on a TV and you can watch on a laptop. So it just depends on which plan you're getting as to how many um, streaming devices you can use at a time. So one of the other very popular streaming services is Hulu. Um, with this, it's not based on your streaming quality. Actually, you get the highest quality you can get on your TV based on what you're able to get, which is for a lot of people, high definition. Um, and it automatically does that. The thing with Hulu is you have to buy it based on whether you want ads or you want no ads. Um, some of the different streaming services have short amount of ads, some of them have longer, some are repetitive, so it depends on what you can take with ads. Um, personally, I did Hulu with ads for a while and I hated it, so the extra cost was worth it to me. It just depends on what you're looking for. Um, obviously, the, the cost for ads is a lot cheaper. You can also do a 30-day free trial with Hulu. Um, there's also a TV, live TV option, which we'll talk about a little bit later that you can add on as well with ads or with no ads. The great thing about Hulu is the content, uh, TV content. So Hulu has all the main um, network stations minus one. It has ABC, it has NBC, and it has Fox. So there's no CBS or Things like CW and PBS are not included, but those three main ones are. And you can watch next day the TV shows that are currently airing during that season. So if you like The Rookie or you like the 911 shows, you can watch those shows the day after they air on Hulu. So it has a lot of the current TV going on. Um, it also has a ton of past TV. You can go back and watch things like Law and Order or you can watch um, some of Criminal Minds. So it just depends on what you're looking for, but it has a ton of past TV. It also has movies, just like Net Netflix, it goes through different movies. Um, it has a little bit less original content than Netflix has, but it does have some original content and they're getting even better. Um, the Handmaid's Tale is a really popular one. The Little Fires Everywhere, that was one of the original content shows. So Hulu is actually, um, 
one of the more popular ones because of the way it has that live TV or the TV option, the current TV option. Um, so Hulu, you can actually just watch on two different screens at a time. They do um, have a lot of different add-ons, which includes an unlimited screen option. So you can add on more screens in order to um, play on more devices. So that does cost a little bit extra, but you can do that. You can create profiles as well on here. Um, but they do have other extra add-ons like ESPN. So you can add on that for $5.99. And then that will stream right into the Hulu app. So you don't have to download a separate app for that. Um, they also have a Disney bundle, which is basically Disney Plus, ESPN Plus, and Hulu, which you can use Hulu with ads, without ads, the Hulu plus live TV. Um, so it just depends on what you want. And then Disney, actually, you do have to download a separate app for that. Um, but the Hulu and ESPN are included in one. So you can add in that bundle. Unfortunately, the bundle does not allow you to do a free trial because Disney does not allow you to do a free trial. Um, but again, Hulu will. And then some of the other add-ons are Showtime, HBO Max, Cinemax, Stars. So it just depends on what you want to add on to your package. They have some extra sports packages as well. Uh, so they have a lot of add-on options. So this is kind of what Hulu looks like. Um, this bottom left-hand corner, the My Stuff, is basically like your watch list. It's really great, uh, especially for that current TV, because new shows will tell you how many shows you have left to watch, and it will say if there's new episodes, and those new episodes will go to the top of the screen. Um, this look is actually from a computer screen, but it will, on your TV, it will divide it into TV and movies, um, as well as what's expiring. So with stuff like Netflix and sometimes with HBO Max, you'll have stuff that will just go away and you are you don't even know it's going to go away. It just sometimes will be gone. Uh, Hulu is really great. It will tell you when things are expiring. So you have that extra tab for that. Um, again, it, it is like Netflix where things will expire, but again, it's less with the TV and more with uh, newer movies coming through. So that's just kind of what the screen looks like. You have one at the top, which is your home screen. It has lots of recommendations based on different categories as well. Um, again, if you have live TV, it's going to integrate it onto that screen as well. We'll talk about that. Um, and then this is just the rookie. That's one of the pages where it will keep track of the different seasons and you can play it directly um, from that page. So it's, it's really uh, simple and it's really, there's lots of features to Hulu. So as you can tell, that one is uh, my favorite streaming service. Prime Video is, of course, another one. Um, there is an option for Prime where you can have Amazon Prime or you can have just the Prime Video. Amazon Prime, of course, includes that free shipping. Um, so you get the shipping, you get some of the book content on there, uh, some of your storage for your pictures. So you get that with your Prime membership. But you don't have to do that. You can actually just have Prime Video without the membership. So that's a, a cheaper cost, $8.99 a month versus that higher $12.99 a month. Um, a lot of these streaming services too will allow you to pay for a year. So if you want to do it that way, if you're consistently paying anyway, you know you like the service, um, it's actually a cheaper cost a lot of the time to pay for that year. So you do have a benefit for doing that, but you don't have to. Um, Prime, Amazon Prime does still have the 30-day free trial. And of course they have some original content. It's a lot less than Netflix. You're gonna have a lot less original, but they're getting also better with it. I think each of the streaming services are. So you have um, Fleabag, Jack Ryan, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, a lot of content on there um, for television as well. You have a lot of past television, a lot of new movies coming up. And again, you can play your purchased content that you've purchased through Amazon, whether that's movies or TVs as well on Amazon Prime video. Um, so you can have profiles with this. They pretty much all have profiles. This one's again, gonna just be the two screens that you can watch it on. Um, you can create a My Stuff, another watch list that you can create. It divides it into TV, into movies, into purchase content. So again, these are all very similar. Um, I personally, I think that the interface is a little bit harder to use. Their fast forward feature is not as great as Netflix or Hulu, but it still has a lot of good content. Uh, and it's great to use if you use a lot of Amazon. 
So one of the semi newer options is Disney Plus. And again, you can still do that bundle with Hulu with this, but they have their own service that you can pay for for $7.99 a month. Disney does not have any ads at all. They have uh, a lot of, of course, the Disney content. You have now Pixar and Marvel and all the Star Wars stuff, plus National Geographic. So it's become not just a great service for kids, but for adults. Um, of course, Hamilton was one of the things that got a lot of people invested in getting the streaming service. But um, they've been adding a lot of uh, more content for adults too, like the Marvel content. You have new shows like Loki or WandaVision, a Star Wars series like The Mandalorian. So you have a lot of that great content with original content as well. So it has, it's adding again, a lot more stuff as it goes. You also can get access, at least right now, to movies that are released in the theater. Some of the Disney movies, you do have to sometimes pay more, sometimes you don't for those. So this is what Disney looks like. It's great. Um, I didn't mention that Netflix has a kids page that you can kind of limit some of what the kids see. Disney is another one. It lets you create a very visually appealing kids page for them. Um, and then you have other profiles you can create. Disney's really great because you can actually stream on four different devices at once um, and it's still included in that same cost. So that's a pretty big deal for people with uh, you know, a lot of kids and their family. Um, so you have those profiles you can create and then of course you have a watch list you can create as well with Disney. Um, Paramount is another one. This is a great one to supplement with uh, something like Hulu because CBS shows are not included in the Hulu package. They kind of do their own thing. Um, it used to be called CBS All Access. It was more geared towards those CBS shows, but now it's called Paramount because it's added stuff to it, like uh, things that you can get from MTV, Nickelodeon, BET, Comedy Central. So it's added more content. So they've kind of rebranded it. Um, there are two different versions, the ads version and the one without ads. The one with the ads, besides having the ads that you have to watch, you got to know that the CBS shows are actually not included in that plan. So if you're interested in CBS shows, you're going to have to uh, pay a little bit more money to do the no ads version. Um, they're also adding in more original content. They have, you know, The Good Fight's very popular, Picard, Why Women Kill. But they also have some other movies and some other past TV shows. They have more stuff coming up, like the Frasier reboot, iCarly, Criminal Minds revival, things like that, that are coming down the line. So they're a little bit newer with some of their stuff, but they are adding more. And again, if you watch a lot of CBS shows, you can get those as well um, with the higher cost plan the next day, like you can on the Hulu uh, side. So that is the convenience. Um, you can create profiles. There's a a seven day free trial, and you can watch on three different uh, screens as well. Peacock is a lot newer to the game. I think they're one of the more most recent ones that has been added. And this is through, this is the NBC content. So you can still get NBC content on Hulu. They have not taken that away as of right now, but Peacock has its own streaming service that they've created. So they have three different tiers. Um, there's a free service that you can just download the app and watch the free stuff with ads. Uh, it's very limited in content though. They don't have a lot available with the free option. Um, if you want to go a little bit up with pretty much most of the content on Peacock, then you're, you can add the one with ads for $4.99. Um, they also have the next day availability for NBC shows. So if you don't have Hulu, then you can watch some of those NBC shows as well on there. And then they have a premium, a Peacock Premium Plus, which is no ads. Um, and then there are a few shows that you will find that have some ads either at the beginning or um, a little bit in between, but it's supposed to be one that has less and shorter ads, even with that premium. So it is a little more expensive, but you do have all of that content and there's a number that you can download for that offline viewing. Um, as I mentioned, because it's newer, they haven't added a ton of original content yet. They do have the new Harry Potter movies or the Harry Potter movies. They have The Office. That's been a big deal for a lot of people. It used to be on Netflix. It's now on Peacock. Um, Parks and Rec. They have Law and Order. So they do have some original content 
coming up as well. They also have a lot of uh, true crime stuff. They have news. They have the nightly talk shows. Um, so they're slowly adding things. For this one, usually two or three screens is pretty typical. This one has three screens that you can watch on simultaneously. It does have a free trial. Uh, it has the profiles as well. Um, it's also going to be airing the Olympics, so you can watch the Olympics. It has some live sports on there. Um, and of course, wrestling is really big on Peacock. They, they pretty much have exclusive rights to the wrestling. Um, the next two streaming services uh, have less of the TV and more of their original content and movies. Um, so HBO Max is really big with, um, they have tons and tons of original content, tons of movies. So they just have so much that you can watch. And that's probably why their prices are a lot higher. There are another service where you can do an ad free or an ad version. Um, you can watch it on three screens. And of course, that original content is one of the biggest draws of HBO. It's you know similar to if you had cable and you got HBO, except for they now have the original content through this app. So it, it has a lot of great stuff. So you have Friends on here, you have Westworld, Game of Thrones, of course, was on there, um, and then newer movies. They're currently playing some of the newer Warner movies um, that are airing at the movie theaters. I don't know how long that's going to last post-COVID, but you can watch those currently through HBO Max. Unfortunately, there is no free trial though, so you just have to, to buy the service if you want to test that out. Um, and then they do allow 4K streaming. A lot of these do as well. The other services do as well. Um, so that's kind of what HBO Max looks like. I just wanted to show that. Um, again, it has a lot of great content. Uh, Apple TV, um, it's actually not that new, but uh, less people use it because the content is not quite there yet. They, they've been adding more and more, but they still have a lot less than some of these other streaming services. The big thing about Apple is they have a lot of big names associated with their TV shows. So they do have a lot of original TV show content, a lot of um, original content with movies, but it's um, mostly because they have big name celebrities in these shows that it's popular. So you have Jennifer Aniston or Reese Witherspoon in these different shows. Um, the cost is actually not, not too much. It's, you know, unlike their uh, device, it's a low cost $4.99 a month. It has no ads. There's just the one option. Um, you can do what's called Apple One and you can bundle different services. So they have Apple TV and the arcade and music and things like that that you can bundle all together in a certain price. It just depends on your storage as to what cost that is um, because you're keeping certain content. And then of course they have that promo that they're doing that if you buy an Apple device, you get three months free of this um, with that Apple device. So this one is another one that you can watch on three screens. You could do the offline content. Um, so that's Apple. It's, it's becoming a little bit well known and they've actually been integrating some of the the apps on the remotes for some of the different uh, streaming devices too. Um, and of course, there are a lot of free apps out there. So those are mostly the, the pay apps that you're going to find. Um, but the free apps tend to have, you're going to have to deal with commercials. Um, for instance, the CW, if you watch some of the superhero stuff like The Flash or Supergirl, um, you can get CW app for free, but you do have to watch those ads. It also is limited on how long those shows will stay. Like Hulu, if you're watching next day shows, um, like current TV shows, a lot of the times they'll stay. You can watch the whole season when you want to watch it because it will stay at least until the next uh, season airs. And sometimes even longer, sometimes they don't go away. Something like CW, you're going to have it for a certain amount of new episodes and then it's going to go away. Um, PBS is the same. They do have a pay option you can do, but their other service, a lot of the stuff is just available for a certain amount of time, a certain amount of new episodes. Uh, Pluto TV, Tubi, and Crackle, those are all free apps that you can get some just random TV and random movies. Um, again, you have to watch those ads, but it has extra content. If you're okay with the ads, then you can get some extra TV and movies. You're probably not going to be able to go completely without cable with these services, but they're nice supplements to some of the stuff you may already have. 
Um, and then of course we have Hoopla, which is our, through our library. You just need a library card to use Hoopla. You can download it actually, you can add the app onto your Roku, you can put it on your Apple TV, so you can watch it on your TV. Um, there's not going to be any ads, and then that includes movie and TV content as well. Um, so you get four downloads a month, so you can watch up to four things a month on that. Um, of course, there are different other streaming services out there. There are so many, and I know there's a lot to choose from, but once you kind of have an idea of what you want to watch, uh, you kind of know which ones to add. The last section I want to talk about is the live TV option. Um, so live TV is going to get you closest to what you're probably used to with your cable service. Um, it's similar in that it has a DVR still, it's just a cloud DVR. So a cloud DVR is, um, it's keeping it in the internet instead of on a DVR, a physical DVR. The great thing about a cloud DVR is you can actually um, record that content. You can record multiple shows. So you're not limited to, oh, you can only stream or only uh, record two at a time or three at a time. You, you can record a lot of options at a time. Um, it also allows for more storage. So you can have more content stored on your DVR with the cloud DVR. Um, there are also still those on-demand options that you'll see on cable. Um, you can get those too with the live TV options. So shows that have aired, you can watch them later on demand. Uh, you can fast forward, pause and rewind that DVR content that you've recorded um, for pretty much all of them. And then the downside is that there is no original content with these. You can still have those different streaming apps, but these specific live TV things are not going to have that original content. Um, minus one, which is Hulu, which does combine the live TV option with uh, your Hulu, um, just regular content. So you have that combined in one cost. Um, because the, they're gonna have more channels, more of the channels that you're used to with cable, then it is gonna be a little bit higher cost than some of the other streaming services, um, but lower cost typically than your cable that you're paying right now. Um, and then another great thing is that you don't have a contract with these. So these still are gonna be month to month. You can cancel at any time. You don't have to worry about that extra DVR equipment. Uh, so you have those benefits as well. Um, they are, a lot of them are limited in their 4K. So if you're a big 4K streamer, you may have a little bit less options for that. And they do require some of them, not all of them, but um, they do require a home network, which it's basically your network that you're using at home. Um, so you're connecting it to your address, your physical address. Um, there are still options for traveling with it. Uh, you just have to be able to check in with your home network. You have to sign in with your home. There's a certain time period for the different ones, um, 90 days for YouTube or 30 days for Hulu, uh, just depending. And so you have to check in with those home networks. So you can still, you know, still share it with certain people and still use it traveling. Um, but it is based on your home as well. So YouTube TV is one of the more popular, is actually the most popular um, live TV option. One of those reasons is it has unlimited storage for the uh, cloud DVR, um, but it does cap it at nine months. So you have to watch, watch the content in nine months, um, but you still get up to three screens. You can stream on uh, simultaneously. Um, they do have a 4K option as well, so their cost is 60, basically $65 a month, which is pretty typical for live TV, but if you want 4K streaming, you're going to have to pay an extra 20 a month for that. They have a lot of channels. They have 85 plus channels. They include the network channels, the news, the sports, um, and of course you can add on some extras like HBO Max and Stars, and use those same credentials to add on those extra apps. Um, they also have some sports add-ons. I know that's a big deal for a lot of people, so that's an option. Um, they also have a seven-day free trial that you can use for that as well. Um, the, like I said, the main sports are on there, the NFL, the NBA, MLB, um, things like PBS, Nickelodeon, BBC America, those are included. Um, if you're a big Hallmark watcher, that is not one of the uh, channels that they have on this though. So Hulu, as I mentioned, includes Hulu and live TV. Again, you get the, the ads and then the no ads, but it includes both of those services. So in addition to your live TV streaming, you can get those um, 
on demand shows, the TV shows, past TV shows, original content, along with your live TV included in that cost. Um, the downside compared to YouTube is that it only hour, allows 50 hours of storage. So it's a lot less storage. They do have an enhanced option though. Um, in addition to screens that you can add, you can add more cloud storage as well. Um, you can bundle that too. And uh, instead of two screens, you can have unlimited screens. Um, and unfortunately, unless you have that enhanced cloud storage, you cannot fast forward recorded content, which is a big downside um, for that. So if it's something you wanna add, it's $10 a month extra for the extra storage and fast forwarding. Um, it offers a lot of the same channels as well, 75 plus channels, including those network news and sports. Um, fortunately, it doesn't have Hallmark either. BBC America and PBS is very limited, so those are not included. Um, it does have that original content though, so it depends again on what you're looking for. And of course, it has those Disney and ESPN bundles you could do with the Hulu Live TV as well. Fubo TV is a little less known. It's also a little more pricey when you start adding on the different packages. Um, but the starter is about the same cost at 65. Um, you have a lot less channels with that. So it's the 118 channels. You still have three, um, three devices you can stream on. And then you have the cloud DVR still at 250. So it's actually not too bad but it's the amount of channels that you're losing with the, the lower package. You can go up of course in package you get more channels, you get a lot more cloud DVR and screens, um, but again, it costs a little bit more. And then they have the Spanish language option as well, the Latino quarterly that gives you some of that um, other channels as well in Spanish. So it depends again on what you're looking for. This one includes all the network TV, um, it includes news, it does include Hallmark, um, and of course it includes sports, which that's one of its um, most well-known features. If you're big into sports, that's something that you're going to get a lot of on Fubo TV. Um, it has the Big Ten, ESPN 1 and 2. It has CBS Sports. Um, CBS app does have those CBS Sports as well and March Madness, but this is included too. Um, Fox Sports, some of the regional ones, MLB, Golf Network. So you got a lot of sports if this is what you're interested in. Um, some of the things they don't includes the Turner networks like CNN, TBS, TNT, those are no longer included. Um, it's also limited with its 4K capabilities. So if that's important, that's not really much of an option. Um, but there is also a free uh, seven day trial with this one. Sling TV is a lower cost option and it includes two different packages. So the packages are actually the same cost. It just depends on what you want. So one of them has more news and entertainment. One is focused on sports and family. One includes one streaming device. One includes three streaming devices. Um, so it just depends on which one you want, or you can include both of them. So it costs $50 to have both of the different um, options with more channels. So there is a, also a free um, option now, but it does have pretty limited TV and movies, and it does have those ads that you have to watch. Um, so for this one, the downside is the network channels. It's very much based on where you're at. So sometimes those network channels don't work. Um, the nice thing is you don't have to have a home network. So you, it's a lot better for travel, but you do have the, um, sometimes it won't have those local channels. So that is the downside to that one, um, and it doesn't really have 4K capabilities either. Um, and then the last one here is Philo, and this one is more, this has no network, no news. Um, it's more for those uh, cable channels like the Travel Channel and Hallmark and HGTV. So you got your reality, your cooking, things like that. Um, there's a seven day free trial for this one. There is no 4K. Um, but you do have unlimited storage, which is really nice um, and pretty rare. And then you can stream it on three different devices. Um, so for this one, the only options are Epics and Stars for add-ons. But again, this is another app, so you can have other apps as well. Uh, so I just wanted to give you that uh, picture just to show you kind of a comparison of some of the things I just talked about. I know on here is included um, AT&T TV. Um, I didn't go into any of the internet provider uh, options because honestly, a lot of those are pretty costly. The add-ons are costly. The options are a little more limited. So it's not going away from it as much um, as the other things that we've been talking about. 
Um, AT&T now has had, a, or the TV has had a lot of issues with changes, with costs, with names. Um, they have very expensive upgrades. Xfinity Flex is a little limited on their apps that you can add to it. So, um, so I didn't really want to talk too much about those, but those are also options out there. So in summary, um, why would you choose streaming versus cable? So the biggest thing for the pros for streaming is that, of course, you have that binge watching. Not only Netflix, um, you know, with the, the shows that come all out at the same time, but a lot of these streaming services has so much original content and past content that you can binge watch so many TV shows or movies at once. So it has lots and lots of content. Um, it's very convenient. As I mentioned, you can download these apps and you can travel with a lot of these watch them from anywhere, have different devices and play them on different um, TVs in your home. So you can watch it basically when you wanna watch it and where you wanna watch it. Um, the cost, even when you're adding on these streaming services and with the internet cost, it's still less than you're gonna have um, with cable, especially with the ones that I talked about first, those other streaming services that aren't the live TV, those are pretty low cost um, to add in with your internet. You have that less physical equipment. So either you have no DVR at all or you have that cloud DVR. Um, you don't have to worry about negotiating those rates. They have those rates pretty, I mean, they do, do change from time to time, but they have those rates set um, and you can cancel early. It's a month to month thing. You don't have to worry about penalties. Um, if you're, you have a lot of interruptions in your surface area for some reason and your DVR just stops recording, Sometimes it won't pick back up or sometimes you'll just completely miss sections of a show. Well, you're not gonna have that as much with your streaming. If you're watching something on Hulu the next day, it has something where it goes out, you just go right back to watching it once your service is back. So that's a, a more convenient option as well. Um, and like I said, it's very portable and a lot of users can use it. Um, some of the co cons is, of course, that the content can leave the streaming service, as I mentioned. So sometimes you'll have a movie you want to watch and it'll be gone within a month. Um, but a lot of that is the newer movies that you would see coming through. So a lot of stuff doesn't leave, but that can be a con for some people. Um, some of the lower cost versions do have ads, uh, so you have to, to worry about that with something like Hulu. So if you want no ads, you're gonna have to pay a little bit more. If you want 4K, sometimes you have to pay a little bit more. Um, and then of course, the biggest con is the variety of apps. As you have seen, there are tons and tons of apps and options um, and it can be very overwhelming, I know at first, but once you start looking into the different streaming options, seeing what you really can cut out, what you really want, um, it does become easier and the more you use it, the easier it becomes, especially if you're using some simple interfaces like Roku or the Kindle Fire stuff. Um, so it, it can be a challenge at first, but it does get easier with time.